This episode of Nigerian American contains strong language that may not be suitable for children. Listener discretion is advised. Wow. This resort is so nice. <laughs> How did you get to plan all this without me even suspecting anything? Don't worry about that. You just get ready to have a good time. I'm sure all those your social media friends in Lagos will be jealous when they see the pictures. Wow. Look at the view. This is awesome. <laughs> this is great. This is nice. Where's my phone? Where's my phone? Where's my phone? Where's my phone? Hey, 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 don't don't put me in your Snapchat pictures. Okay? Sorry, 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 babe, sorry, babe, sorry. I I didn't know you were standing there. Hashtag Jude and Shade twenty eighty. Hashtag honeymoon. Hashtag leaving a vida loca. Okay, 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 okay. I promised myself I will not be on my phone this week. I want to spend some quality time with my husband. <coughs> whoa, whoa. Shadi, wait, 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 wait. I'm, I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired. Okay, 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 okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Hello? Hey, Abdul. My man. Oh, nice. When did you guys land? Nice. Okay, uh, let me know when you, once you guys are sorted, eh? Shadi, I need to link up with uh, Abdul and Kweku. They're checking in downstairs. What? They're here? Yes. What? Why? What? Did they flew in today? Like today? What do you mean? What, what's the problem? Really? Really? I mean, I mean, this is our honeymoon. Babe, really. Just when I was thinking that you wanted to even do something nice with me. For once. Please, 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 please. I mean, don't, don't, please don't start this nonsense tonight. What, what do you mean by that? Do you know how much this wedding cost? Something nice. Please, don't, don't piss me off, Shadi. Please. Something nice for once. But Jude, it's our honeymoon. Come on. We barely just got here and you're already making plans to hang out with somebody else. L listen. S especially that promiscuous Abdul. Shut the fuck up, Shadi. Before I slap the shit out of you. Are you mad? I are you mad? Are you mad? Ah. Are you ah. mad? Are you are you no, mad? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Babe, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Fuck, fuck this, man. I'm going downstairs. By the time I get back, you better get your shit together. Otherwise, I'm sending you back to Lagos. Don't sense. Uh, hello? Hello, my dear. Huh? How are you? I'm okay, mom. <laughs> I know Pastor said we should leave you alone. Don't worry. I'm just calling to make sure you arrive safely. How is your husband? He's fine. He, he just stepped out. Are you okay? <laughs> Mommy. Shadi. Shadi, what happened again? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Jude and 
I had an argument. That's it. That's it, really. Shadi, I keep telling you, you need to be patient. Eh? What did you do this time? Mom, I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. I'm just... I'm just... I'm just tired. I'm tired, Mom. Tired? What do you mean by you are tired? Mommy, I, I don't think... I don't think, honestly, I don't know if this was a good idea. I don't think I should have gone through with this. I don't what? think so. I don't think so. Shari, you better stop that right now. This is the same nonsense you were saying during the wedding preparation. After we had already paid all the money for the venue and everything, your daddy must not hear about this. So he must not hear about this. Do you know how much money we spent on this wedding? So you want to disgrace us? Eh? You want to make us a laughing stock, Shade? Eh, Shade? Shade? Oh, Shade, marriage is not easy. It's not easy. I don't want to hear that you are giving up. You better just eh, humble yourself and do whatever it takes to make it work. We have invested so much in this relationship. For you to just Throw, throw, throw it all away. Mommy, 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 mommy. Mommy, mommy, can I please call you back, please? Somebody's calling me on the other line. It's an unknown number, it may be Jude. Uh, okay. Sha, make sure you exercise patience. Okay, mom. Eh? Okay, mom. Pele, my dear. Pele, don't worry. <laughs> it is well. It is well. Hello? Hey, what's up, sis? How's Dubai? Hey, bro. I didn't know it was you. It's okay. It's me, oh. Hmm. I just wanted to check on you guys. You know. how's, how's Jude? Uh, let me say what's up to him real quick. He's not here. He's not here. He just stepped out. Shadi, are you okay? Is something wrong? <laughs> Nothing. Jude and I just had like a small argument. What? That's all. On your honeymoon? Are you serious? Oh my god. Wait, 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 please, please, please don't tell me he hit you again. <laughs> he hit you again? Oh, I told you, I told you, I told you not to marry this guy. This guy's a fucking animal, man. Oh my goodness. This guy's going to kill you one day, Shadi. You need to get your things and come back home. Oh my god. I, I can't leave, Junior. Junior, I just can't leave. I don't like that. Do We've been like together this. for over 10 years. So what? Over 10 years. I mean, I, mean, I just so can't walk away from my marriage. Ha. Jude and I have gone through so much together. So what, Shadi? So what? <laughs> Where would I start from? Where? Shadi, you are in danger. Can't you see you're in danger? How many times does he need to beat you before you realize you should not be in this relationship? Are you going to wait until he kills you? You have your whole life ahead of you. So what if you've been together for 10 years? Eh, uh, where? Where will I start from? Shadi, there's nothing wrong with starting hey. over. There's hey, Junior, wrong Junior, with Junior, starting Junior, over. Uh, uh, Junior, I have to call you back, please. I have to call you back. You just come in, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. In episode 14, 
I started my Cognitive Bias miniseries discussing the confirmation bias. Like I said on that episode, the goal of my Cognitive Bias series is not to provide you with a how-to guide, but to highlight some errors in judgment that occur daily. I'm not a social scientist and definitely not an authority of behavioral sciences. I am simply looking to share some of what I've learned from reading on this topic to my podcast audience. My wish is that after listening to my mini series, and maybe even after reading Rolf DeBelli's book, The Art of Thinking Clearly, you'll learn to recognize and try as much as possible to evade the biggest errors in thinking that may lead to less irrationality and hopefully more prosperity. Before we begin, we need to first of all acknowledge that it is almost impossible to rid ourselves of cognitive errors completely. We must also recognize that not all cognitive errors are bad. Some cognitive errors are even necessary for one to enjoy life. However, a lot of self-induced unhappiness is a direct result of these cognitive errors, and learning to reduce them in our lives is worth the effort. In economics, a sunk cost is used to describe money that has been spent or payments that have been made that can no longer be recovered. A simple example of a sunk cost is a $100 ticket to a Beyonce concert. Once you pay for it, you typically can't get your money back. The ticket is a sunk cost. It's already paid for, and you can't do anything with it but access the concert. Now, imagine that on the day of the concert, you have a fever, and you don't feel up to going anymore. You have a decision to make. Stay at home to recover, or force yourself to go and see Beyonce. If you choose to go and see Beyonce, simply because you've already paid for the ticket, you are a victim of what is called the sunk cost fallacy. This is a very common thinking error, one of the most common of cognitive biases. I'll try to explain it. A lot of you are listening and thinking, of course I'm going to go see Beyonce. I don't care if I feel sick and won't really enjoy the concert. I'm simply not going to waste $100. The truth is, The moment you paid for that ticket, your $100 was already gone. It's now a sunk cost and should not influence decisions that you make in the future, especially when it has to do with choices that can be negative to your well-being. Essentially, what I'm saying is that historical costs are totally irrelevant when making decisions about the future. I'm sure some would argue that you could gift the ticket to someone else. If you did that, it would be a smarter decision than going to the concert yourself, especially when you're not really feeling well. Gifting the ticket to a friend may even add value to you in some other way. It is a much better decision than forcing yourself to endure discomfort simply because you cannot bear to lose the $100 you have spent on the ticket. If you choose to go in your state of discomfort, You won't enjoy the experience that motivated the purchase in the first place, so why put yourself through further unnecessary discomfort if you can avoid it? The moral here is not that waste is okay. It is that you should implement waste reduction interventions at a time when they can actually help. In this case, you made the purchase not knowing how you would be feeling on the day of the concert. It was a good idea at the time of the purchase, But if you're no longer feeling up to it and you force yourself to go, you're not saving any money. You've already spent the money. Going to the concert is actually now a bad idea because it is not in the best interest of your health and perhaps that of the people who may be standing next to you at the concert. In this episode, I want to discuss the sunk cost fallacy and how many irrational decisions we make impact our lives negatively. In the earliest scene, Shade and Jude, the newlyweds, had just arrived in Dubai for their honeymoon. Upon arrival at the hotel, Shade overheard what sounded like Jude making plans to hang out with his friends. When she expressed disapproval, they got into an argument that led to Jude being abusive. He hit her. It was obviously not the first time. She had obviously been managing an abusive relationship for years. When Shade's mom called and found out Jude was being abusive, she immediately blamed Shade for being impatient and reminded her about how she must do whatever it takes to make the relationship work. What? What? Shut up! 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 Shut up!
Shelly, you better stop that right now. This is the same nonsense you were saying during the wedding preparation. After we had already paid all the money for the venue and everything, your daddy must not hear about this. Oh. He must not hear about this. Do you know how much money we spent on this wedding? So you want to disgrace us? Eh? You want to make us a laughing stock, Shade? Eh, Shade? Shade? Oh, Shade, marriage is not easy. It's not easy. I don't want to hear that you are giving up. You better just eh, humble yourself and do whatever it takes to make it work. We have invested so much in this relationship. For you to just throw, throw, throw it all away. I can't leave, Junior. Junior, I just can't leave. We've been together for over 10 years. Over 10 years. I mean, I, mean, I just can't walk away from my marriage. Many questions come to mind. Why is Shadi's mother immediately blaming her for being impatient even before understanding what happened? Why does she seem to value the money that's already spent over Shadi's future well-being? Why would she encourage Shadi to stay in a relationship that is clearly abusive? And on Shadi's part, why would she marry an abusive partner? Why would she imagine that the years already spent with Jude is more important than her future well-being. It's simple. Shade and her mother are both victims of the sunk cost fallacy. There are many other biases that may also be at play in this scenario, but for the purpose of this conversation, I wish to focus on the sunk cost fallacy. Shade's mother is more concerned about the money spent, the sunk cost of the wedding. To Shade's mother, just like the person who purchased Beyonce tickets, Shade must remain in the marriage and see it through because of the financial cost. This doesn't mean Shade's mother is a horrible person. She simply considers asking Shade to make the relationship work to be a waste reduction intervention. This is a line of reasoning and a decision-making pattern that is common to most humans. It is in our nature to justify a future investment using historical costs. This is a rational thinking, a cognitive bias that often leads to poor decision-making. We make these irrational decisions every day. Shade is also concerned about how long she's been in the relationship. She places more value on the time and energy spent over her future well-being and her overall happiness. When she suggests to her brother that she can't just walk away after spending 10 years with Jude, she's being a victim of the sunk cost fallacy. She can't get those 10 years back, the same way the person who bought the Beyonce ticket can't get their $100 back, and she doesn't have to continue to remain in an abusive relationship because of it. She's again attempting to justify a future investment using historical cost. The sunk cost fallacy becomes more detrimental over time. The more time, money, energy, or love we invest into something, the more we feel the need to carry on, even when it's clear sometimes that we're dealing with a lost cause. Again, I'm not a behavioral scientist, but I believe strongly that if we're able to identify these common cognitive errors in our everyday decision-making, we at least have an opportunity to minimize unnecessary irrationality. How can you avoid the sunk cost fallacy? Here's my general rule. Don't look back. What I consider to be the most rational approach to sunk costs is to constantly and deliberately remind yourself that money or time that you can't get back should have no influence on decisions about what to do next. Only additional future costs should matter. If you've already spent money, time, energy, or love into something, ask yourself objectively, am I looking to see this through primarily because I've already spent a lot of time, energy, money, or love? Or is it because it is the best decision for the future? 
So next time you're at an expensive restaurant and you feel the need to consume everything on your plate, even though you're already full, remember that the decision to force yourself to eat what's left is irrational. An even simpler way to explain the sunk cost fallacy is to ask the following question. Will you eat moldy bread just because you paid for it? The rational answer to this question ought to be no. Unless, of course, eating mycotoxins or fungal poison is your idea of fun. The point is, the fact that you have put in time, money, energy, effort, or even love into something shouldn't limit your options for the future. In conclusion, we must accept that all of us suffer from this cognitive bias. Some negative effects are more costly than others, but attempts at reducing the unhappiness we experience due to the negative consequences of bad judgment and poor decisions makes it worth the effort. I'll discuss other biases in future episodes. I hope this was valuable. Thank you for listening to this episode of Nigerian American. Please feel free to subscribe, leave comments, and share this podcast. You may also reach us by our email, NigerianAmericanPodcast at gmail.com. My name is LD. My producer and I would like to give a special shout out to Queen Teddy for lending us her amazing voice acting talent for this episode. Thanks again for listening.